right, I don't think I could live my professional life without a smartphone, correct? Correct. You just couldn't do it. No. A lot of us can't. So many of us depend on our smartphones. It gets us through our day. But these ever-present devices, they can be too much for young people, some say, especially for those minds that are developing. So how do you know when your child is ready for their first smartphone? Joining us to help answer that question is pediatrician Jenny Rudeski. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. We're going to jump Good right morning. in. Uh, can you tell us about this new questionnaire? I guess there's something that can maybe help parents figure out if their child is actually ready. Tell us about the questionnaire. Yeah, so the American Academy of Pediatrics and AT&T joined together to try to create some new supports for parents, especially knowing how exhausted everyone is coming out of the pandemic, all the tech reliance we had, and all of the questions about how much technology to allow our kids access to. So the questionnaire goes through a couple of things meant to help families reflect on who really wants this phone? Is it the parent who wants it? Is it the kid who wants it? Are they responsible enough? Um, are they showing signs of maturity and accountability that mean they won't lose it, that they'll be kind online, that they'll, uh, if they do make a mistake, that they'll try to make it better. And finally, one of the most important parts of this quiz is, are you as a parent ready to try to be a mentor or a guide when your child gets a device and help them, you know, build a good and healthy relationship with it, not just hand them a device and hope it all works out for the best. All right, so tell us about the findings of this quiz. I think so many parents at home right now want to know if they have a young child, what, what, what's, what's the right age to give a child a smartphone? Yes, and there's the, one of the reasons we did this quiz is there is no, you know, magic silver bullet of a perfect age to get your child a cell phone. It so varies based on who is your child, who is your family, you know, what are the, the situations that require communication or access to other information online. So um, we score this quiz in a way that puts you and your child in three zones, the, you know, ready zone, um, getting there, almost ready zone, and the not so ready zone. These are not hard and fast things. It's not like a Cosmo quiz that's going to like, you know, change your life. This really is something for you to reflect and talk with your kid about whether, are you there yet? Are we ready for this? Are we ready to take this on and all the responsibility that it entails? And I'll be honest, my 12 year old scored in the ready zone and we had a conversation about, you know, we're really not there yet for getting him a phone because his friends don't have one and it really isn't a necessity yet. So let's talk about those signs. So you say you knew you could tell the signs for your child. What are the signs that your, your child isn't ready for a phone? Yeah, so some red flags to think about. If you're feeling your child is pressuring you for a phone or you feel like all the kids in the neighborhood are getting a phone, should we do this for our child? Think about how they did with technology through remote learning or through the pandemic. Were you constantly having fights with them? Were they not able to turn it off by themselves? Were they really distracted with things during online learning and getting into either kind of iffy or toxic uh, interactions online or other ways that they were kind of going down rabbit holes? If you're seeing some of those negative relationships with media already, it might not be a time to give them a device that they can take everywhere and has you know, access to, to all the good and bad of the internet. So thinking about maybe we start with a, a flip phone, maybe we start with just other ways to game with kids online um, or ways to communicate through FaceTime or other video chat that gives kids them what they're looking for, like I want that connection, I want this access to streaming music, um, but you're not opening the whole, you know, Pandora's box of a, of a smartphone to kids if you don't really trust that they're ready yet. But the most important thing is have a conversation with your kids about this because you don't want them just feeling like you're in charge and you make all the decisions. Right. Really talk about what can we do to actually yeah. build some more responsibility that I know you could take care of this. Well, isn't this the toughest thing about being a parent? It's the do as I say, not as mm -hmm. I do. How is it that well, yeah. a parent could tell a child you're not ready for a smartphone when mom and dad are on their smartphone pretty much all day as well? I think parents should use this as an opportunity to build some insight into their own relationship with technology and talk out loud about it with your kids too. At dinner time, talk about what's the funniest and most inspiring thing you saw online? What's the creepiest thing you saw online or the most upsetting? Parents should talk about it just as much as you want your tweens and teens to talk about it too, and even littler kids. You want to set the norm that we talk about these things. They're not taboo. I'm not going to, you know, punish you if you stumbled upon something a little bit creepy online. We should talk about it because that's the way the internet is right now. You know, sometimes you're going to be fed things on an algorithm that you weren't ready for. And you want your kids to trust that they can come to you. You're not going to overreact. You're not going to punish them. You're going to help them solve it.
Can you talk about how to actually monitor the device usage um, to make sure that, you know, I mean, you want, I know that when my daughter first got her phone, you know, we all had the same password on our phones. My, my password, his, her password, David's password. We all had, we all knew each other's passwords. Mm -hmm. um, she knew that it was like, it, it was our phone and she was using it. We we're paying for it, right? But I did want to give her some privacy. Like she, she deserved that. Your, it, your daughter is very precocious though. And she's, she's she, like a step ahead of you and David though. Is not? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But there, there should be like, you know, um, meaningful ways to, to, to monitor them, but also still give them their independence and respect that they deserve. Yes, it's such a tough, you know, line to walk. And so one of the things we did work on with uh, the support of AT&T is an updated family media use plan. So it can be found on healthychildren.org and it allows parents to look through um, a few priorities. Like, do I want to set some no screen zones or times when we need to carve out some undistracted time for conversations about how life is going. Do we want to, especially when you're getting your child their first phone, you want to make sure it's really clear, this is not for the car. You know, we don't want this to be in the bed with you. We want to have some, you know, non-tech time at the dinner table so we can connect with each other. We want to not always use tech to calm down our emotions or escape hard conversations, right? We, we want to be able to face those head on as families. So, when um, we, I really suggest that parents go to the new family media plan, pick only a few things. We loaded it so filled with all the tips and very practical strategies that we um, at the AAP have accumulated over the years. If you try to do it all, it's gonna take too long and it'll flood you. Just choose a few that matter most to you and your kids, even have your kids by your side. Make it a conversation to say, how do we wanna do this? Because for you and your child, Having open access to what each other were experiencing online, it worked for you, but it may not work for another family. And so having kids input is really, really crucial. If they have buy-in, they're much more likely to follow the rules or the limits that result from this family media plan. And you can also always come back a few weeks later and say, hey, that, that didn't really work for us. Let's try something new. And that's what we hope people will come back to the family media plan again and again when things change in their family. Jenny, this is one of my favorite stories. I used to work for an anchor in Santa Barbara. Her name's Beth Farnsworth. Mm -hmm. Very strict mother. And she came into the newsroom. She goes, I think her daughter at the time was 12. Mm -hmm. My daughter wants a smartphone, or I think a flip phone at the time. And she said, I don't want to do it. And then me and the, the Simon editor at the time, whose name's Christina, and we said, Beth, if you don't give your daughter a smartphone, she's going to be so far behind those kids who do have a smartphone. And I think that's going to put her behind in terms of being successful in business. I mean, so much of what people do these days, so much of how you make money is through your smartphone. So what do you have to say to the, the, the parents out there who worry, you know, if, if my kid doesn't have a phone, the other kids are going to be that much more ahead? That is a really common concern. And uh, some advice I have for a parent who's hesitant but doesn't want their child to feel left behind is number one, there are new models of phones out there that allow some of the access to texting and um, connecting with peers. Like there's the Gab phone, there's the pinwheel phone, right? These are kind of starter phones if you don't feel like your child's ready for the full-on smartphone. Once you do get a full-on smartphone, there are ways to set some limits and filters and other things on it. So it's not just open access to everything that's, you know, might not be appropriate for a child who's 12. As you're setting those filters or lockouts or whatever, have your child by your side and talk it through. Just again, so you're not the policeman, you're actually their guide in helping them decide what's appropriate for them and what's not. And then third, you could start with having more rules about the phone use. And as your child shows that they can be responsible, they're not constantly staring at the phone when you're trying to talk to them. Once you reach some ben benchmarks that show you, oh, my kid's actually handling this pretty well, you can loosen up some of those rules developmentally over time. And that's appropriate because once they get to 16 or 18, you want them to really have much more independence from you and not need you looking over their shoulder. Exactly. All right. <laughs> I have an eight, a soon to be 18 year old right. in like how many days? In, in days, she'll be 18. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Rodeski. To access the full phone ready guide, you can visit screenready.att.com. Good information. Great information right there.